Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today our artistic journey brings us to color sliders. What do they do? My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So as you know, the world is full of beautiful colors and you want to have them in your pictures, but how do you choose colors and what do all these color sliders do? Let's have a look. So here, for example, we have a very choosy color and on the top left, we click on fill for the fill color and then we have all these choices here and today I want to talk about what they are doing and you will see that this is really interesting and very helpful for getting the best colors into your picture. So to answer one question that you might have wondered all of your life about why is there just one kind of visible light that we can see with our eyes but then there is two different systems, which you know is RGB and CMYK. So it's the colors that we have on screens and then the colors we, for example, paint with. Why are they different? How does that work in a universe with just one visible light out there? So let's answer that question first. This will help us to understand the rest of the color sliders. Okay, so we have the subtractive system. This is for everything that is as a color on a surface, like print colors, paint colors, the color of your skin, the color of your shirt, all these kind of things that are inside of a material and they reflect light. So what that means is white light is coming in or like any kind of light, but let's go with white light for the moment. White light is coming in and if you have a blue shirt, Everything is taken out of the light except the blue and the blue is reflected back into your eye so you can actually see a blue shirt. Now, of course, it's a philosophical and scientific question. Is your shirt actually blue or maybe it's red or maybe it's something else? How does this subtraction work? This is still an open question in science and in philosophy. Where does color actually come from? But this is not the question for this episode. This episode is just about the very basic principle. White light comes in, everything is subtracted. Blue light goes out. So this means when you look at a blue shirt, it looks blue. Additive color, on the other hand, means that the surface is producing the colorful light itself, like for example, on your screen. So there is nothing to subtract from. It's no white light to begin with it is already blue light when it comes into your eye. There is no uh, reflection happening. So if you want to change the color, you have to add more light sources to it to change the color. And this is how our displays work. And so, of course, when you look inside of your display or very close at your display, you will realize that in the display you have three different color choices and that is RGB, which is red, green, and blue. So if we set these all over here, you can see here red, green, blue. This is how all of the colors that you can see on your screen are created. And you can see if I have all my sliders to the left, this means no light is emitting. And this means there, as you can see, the circle now is just a black dot. There is no light emitted from the screen at that position. Let's reduce these other parts so we can actually just see the dot. Okay, so now if you add red light, you can see the dot is getting red. And then the other sliders have changed because they give you a preview of what will happen when you add now, for example, green light and red and green. Zip, turns into yellow in this case with the RGB system. And of course, now if you add blue, all the colors, this is getting white because now you emit all of the light, all of the colors at the same time that your monitor can produce. So this means that you have simply a white screen that you can look at, or in this case, a white circle that you can look at. And when you move these around, you can create different kind of colors. And this is a very nice system to adjust colors very slightly and give them a different kind of feel and a different kind of look. 
What you can see here, what I don't have sliders for in the RGB system is the brightness of the color or the luminosity and the saturation, stuff like that is not really there. You have here this kind of preview bar and then you can click here and move up and down. But this changes your color, so this is not a good idea. You don't want to do it that way, so you want to switch to another setting. This is why we have the different systems. So let's look at the hex sliders before we go to CMYK. You might wonder what are the hex sliders. So if you do any kind of application on your screen, for example, a web page, or you do a software like a video game or an app or stuff like that, they often work with hex color systems and that means if you choose any of these colors that you can create with the sliders or by picking them in this preview bar you can see that these numbers and uh, letters jump around and now if you say okay this is exactly the color i want to have on my web page you take this code and you copy it in the uh, like field where this should be on your website and this will have this exact color. So this is how you transfer. You can just copy a text code snippet like this little text here. And this will give you the color every time the exact same color. So this is very, very useful for every kind of thing that you design on a screen. Like I said, an app, a website, a video game, stuff like that. Really, really helpful. Okay, so now if we go over to CMYK. Before we go to HSL, we go to CMYK because this is the print color, as you know. So let's reset the sliders here. And here we have the opposite thing. If we don't have any colors here, so everything is on the left side. On the screen version, we have seen gives us a black circle because no light is emitting. On the paper, if I don't add any color, of course, the paper stays white. So you can see if everything is at zero, white circle. If I move blue in, blue circle or cyan in this case, cyan. So cyan, magenta, yellow, and then we have black, by the way. So I move cyan in, cyan or blue circle. If I move magenta with it, you can see this is getting a little bit violet. And now if I add yellow also, this is kind of black. It's not completely black, it's kind of black. And this is why your printer also has a black cartridge because mixing all the colors doesn't make it completely black so you have to have additional black color and now it is completely black good by the way i didn't change my file format to cmyk as i should because this is just a preview of the slider so if you work with cmyk colors you should switch your document over to cmyk colors which you do up here document and then you go to convert format and ICC profile. Click on that and here format. That's the important thing. The format you have RGB and then down here you have CMYK. Okay, good. So that is how that works. And again, you can see we have a little preview here, but this case, in this case, we also have um, the ability to add black. And this actually does add black. It does not add white. So it's not like the left is white the uh, the right side is black this only adds black from nothing to black so that's important to understand in this case okay so let's go to the hsl slider what does that do so it is created of three different parts and in this case let's make this a little bit brighter so we actually see nice colors we have the hue which you in your everyday speech would say is the color it's if you say it professionally, it's the hue and the hue are, as you can see, all the kind of different colors in the rainbow, all the different hues in the rainbow. Saturation is how much color is actually in there. So if it's zero, it's just the brightness or luminosity of your color choice, but no color in there. So if you have it 100 percent, it's all color but the same brightness. So this is important to understand. So saturation is defining how much color can I see? And the luminosity is defining how bright is the color. And you can see here, if I change the luminosity, the setting for the saturation, the lowest setting also changes to a darker or brighter value from completely white to completely black. Luminosity, no luminosity, of course, black, 
all the luminosity is of course white and if it's like that at all like a 100% luminosity there is no more color to see because it's like just blown out uh, with too much brightness as you can uh, imagine okay so um, another thing that's important to understand here with this slider is that the preview box here will react to my set uh, to my saturation setting so you can see all of the other colors how they would look at that saturation setting so this is very helpful you might wonder why doesn't this change when i change my luminosity setting this is because the luminosity is already in here you have black on the bottom white on the top here and everything in between shows you the different forms of luminosity but again if you click in here boom this will always change the color so don't click in here like it's a good way to move your mouse around but it's not very precise uh, rather use the sliders this is more for the preview actually and by the way one thing to point out all of these have opacity um, below them right now it looks like it's adding white but this is because my background is white luminosity just uh, opacity just makes it the color transparent not not really part of the color it's part of how this element in your software um, in, in the layer works okay good let's go on to the next one lab I don't think you will use this very much It's a very um, strange kind of system um, lab was created to be close to how the human eye works so uh, you have a luminosity slider here that goes again from complete black to complete white and then in between you have two sliders and you can see what they do I think if you set them up like this so one goes from uh, from green to red the other one goes from blue to yellow uh, let's go some more brightness and by the way you can see here with luminosity if I go to 100% I still can see um, different colors and personally I find this rather confusing but you can still use it it's there for you if you want it and you can I would suggest you look up lab uh, colors on the internet and read about it because it's still confusing it's kind of hard to complain and too confusing for this video I feel like so let's go to the next one which is the HSL color wheel so before we have talked about HSL so we have the hue the saturation the luminosity now we have it represented as a wheel so on the wheel on the outside you have all the hues in the rainbow and then I, I shouldn't say in the rainbow because that's just light uh, not like anyways you know what I mean um, and then here we have the saturation of the color and we also have the brightness of the color in this little triangle here so I can move this around and this can be very intuitive uh, but at the same time I would argue that in this case for example it is, it is very um, easy to adjust um, the saturation and the brightness and to choose a color this is very quick but it makes it a little bit harder to get precise colors so if you want very precise and artistic looking colors I would still go back to RGB to give them um, like the final very like soft adjustment to how the hue should actually look that you want to use or CMYK if you are talking about creating something for print but this is what this HSL color wheel is actually doing good so then we have hue saturation and lightness or luminosity in this uh, like separated as individual um, choices and the reason why we have this is um, that here you can set up the hue and you can keep the rest of the uh, like the rest of the settings so you have here a point of course where you can still adjust the saturation and you can still adjust the lightness or luminosity of the of the color but you have just one slider here so the, the slider is mostly what this choice is about so here you can say I would want to keep the saturation and I would keep the luminosity I just want to change the hue of the color so you can fade here through the different hues without changing the other settings here you can do the same for saturation so color stays the same you just change the saturation and here with the lightness you only 
change the lightness from black to white and everything in between but not the rest so it's just separated out what you would do here on this um a setting here but yeah well it's, it's there if you need it so there is uh, uh two more that are pretty interesting and that i use a lot one of them i use a lot the other one not so much actually grayness you might wonder why do i need grayness so grayness is um everything from black to white just all the gray values you have there as you can see there's just 100 not very much um but the good thing is if you need a specific gray value for your design or if you need it as a background uh, for your pictures to see how do the colors look how do that does the contrast look of my picture you want to have different kind of gray values and you want to set them up precisely to a certain number you can do that here and it's very easy to see what kind of gray value you're actually using so this can be very very useful and then let's uh, go here and make this colorful again we have tint and tint is adding white so this is different from what we have done before where we have added black here we are adding white so this is getting brighter and brighter of course you can say in the hsl slider you also can go to white and you also can go to black so this has everything this is both options in there uh, but tint um, leaves the color same but just add as is adding white to the color sometimes you want that that you say the same color but i i wish it had a little bit more white in the color um then you can do this with the tint slider okay so this is basically what all these different sliders do they all have their special purpose they are all very useful and i would suggest you experiment with them and like i said i find the HSL color wheel is very quick to select colors, but you get kind of pure colors. So I would select a color there that you like, and then you go over to your RGB setting or your CMYK setting, and you do some fine tuning to say, oh, I want a little bit more of this. I want a little bit more of that. And you will see that your colors look a lot more beautiful. They come a lot more alive and have this kind of artistic touch in them that you are not getting from just picking a color out of this color ring so yeah this is my advice to you experiment with them now you know what they all do have fun and see you in the next part of our artistic journey bye